Stop calling me a wuss. Stop calling me Mellow Mazzy. <laughs> I know I say gorgeous and beautiful and easygoing too much and, and melodic. Uh, I did a video on my 30 favorite, personal favorite songs of all time. In the mood in that moment. I got a lot of great support and uh, some of you have suggested your songs or why didn't you include this song or that song. I got a few uh, comments saying, what, no rock and roll, no you know, heavier stuff, all melodic? What am I, a pussy? I am not a heavy metal fan. Uh, anyway, those of you who watch me know that I'm not like a metal fan. I, I like punk. Um, but I decided, okay, I'm going to do uh, some of my personal favorite rock and roll songs. Now, I'm doing about 40. Now, 40 could be 41, 42, 38, 39. It's rock and roll. It doesn't, doesn't matter. And I'm not ranking them. So I decided to go more into the rock and roll realm of uh, my interest and uh, some of my favorite songs. Now, there won't be ACDC and there won't be any of these uh, hair metal bands and there won't be any uh, black uh, metal Russian, Soviet, South American, Peruvian <laughs> wanker bands. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate people who are into that music. It's just not my thing, but these are rock and roll. And you, whether you question me or not, these are mine. So uh, you'll see. They're rock and roll and they're not um, maybe what some of you metalheads uh, expect. Although I suspect that uh, I don't get a lot of metalheads watching, even though uh, many of you might like metal and, uh, you know, hard rock, like ACDC hard rock. Actually, I like ACDC, but I'll admit I've never owned one of their records. Not that I don't like them, but, you know, that's how it goes. So all LPs, I'm going to start out with one CD because I realized I didn't have this one song um, on vinyl. I must, but I couldn't find it offhand. I gotta start out with Hound Dog by Elvis Presley. This is a comp of uh, Elvis's one, Elvis 31 hits. This is sort of a response to the Beatles one that was the biggest selling album of the 20, the first uh, decade of this century. Biggest selling album of that by a 40 year old band, 30 year old band by that, at that time. And of course that was written by the great Big Mama Thornton. So starting off with that and that's um, Hound Dog. You know, Jailhouse Rock could have been another one, but we're going to start right there. So let's get on with it. The first kind of rock and roll song I remember hearing, now the Beatles early on, you know, I didn't think of them as rock and roll or looking back on it, we don't think of them as that kind of rock and roll. There is one song I picked for this video. It's my favorite. Remember, these are my personal favorite, but one of my earliest uh, memories of rock and roll that was really different is All Day, All the Night by The Kinks, end of 1964. It was just so different than the other uh, British Invasion bands. And it was just basic, great riff. Of course, what a great song. Uh, uh, what a great riff. And uh, one that would be uh, emulated and copied by many other bands later. Another one, which is a, just a great, thick rock and roll song, especially in mono. And that's Bits and Pieces by the Dave Clark Five. Listen to that song, blast it. It's just all like drums and, ryth and rhythm guitar and it just, Again, another one of the exuberant songs of uh, early uh, British Invasion, uh, sort of the second uh, band to come along after the Beatles. Um, maybe I guess this was uh, slightly before uh, the Kinks song I just showed, but what a great, great, great song. And the great uh, Mike Smith vocals on that. Then I picked one Beatles song from this album. Obviously, I could have gone with Helter Skelter or Me and My Monkey or Birthday from the White album. Um, you know, I dig a pony. There's so many others. You know, they're not a hard rock band. I, I'd say Helter Skelter. Some people think it's the beginning of heavy metal. Who am I to say? Who am I to to be that uh, historian saying that? But I decided to pick uh, Tomorrow Never Knows, TNK, that ends uh, the fabulous 1966 album, Revolver. Uh, John Lennon's song, very drone-like, very rhythm, no real chorus per se. In fact, no chorus. Some, some of the most amazing drumming Ringo ever uh ever played and just just it just got a great vibe to it not particularly fast but it's so it's psychedelic uh rock and roll at its finest in my opinion from this uh listener's opinion now next i'm going to go with a song to me that um one of my favorite groups and i think i think it's a 
assault at the time on rock and roll and just the the the, the, the vocals the, the arrangements it just it's a perfect song it's the who's my generation you know talking about my generation people t try to put me down talking about my generation um, what a great song I'm a big fan of the live version later on in the 70s uh, uh, Patty Smith's version which uh, from the b-side of uh, that single which is so fantastic but this is a great album great uh, this is an expanded edition that is uh three records includes uh, some demos of pete townsend but i love my generation what a great rock and roll song and um i think these are special songs my personal favorite rock songs and i'm going to do from the uh, 1960 well this great record uh, the debut of Velvet Underground, and that is Waiting For My Man. I think Waiting For My Man is a great vocal and a great song and, and fits more in this rock and roll concept, obviously with the famous Andy Warhol uh, cover, banana cover, uh, Andy Warhol, uh, Velvet Underground with Nico, a fantastic, fantastic record from 1967. To me, one of the great sort of anti-war anthems of the 60s. There's two, and I have them both in here actually, uh, by two different groups, but Fortunate Son on here. Probably the most rock and roll Credence uh, song, obviously Credence, you know, and John Fogarty's voice just belted out sometimes, but the way that song and the opening riffs uh, of Fortunate Son just makes this a, a great rock and roll classic, something I grew up with. Um, it, I mean, it meant something at the time, you know, some might think it's dated, obviously, what we're going through now in the world. It's kind of come around full circle. Fortunate Son on Willie and the Poor Boys, uh, one of my favorite Credence albums. You know, I almost didn't pick this. Uh, I was thinking of Neil Young and the songs I like of Neil Young. But of all the songs, um, I really like Mr. Soul. It opens up Buffalo Springfield again. Um, it's got that great opening riff, uh, very reminiscent to a lot of other rock and roll riffs that open a song. And it's just a great, great song with, with Neil and Stephen Stills, a dual guitar playing. Just love it to pieces. Mr. Soul from Buffalo Springfield again. I couldn't get through, a, you know, greatest rock and roll records. And again, some of these songs are going to be the cliche songs that a boomer like me would know about and grew up. But that's why they're my favorites. And of course, Purple Haze. Uh, this is the American version with Purple Haze on it. I love Purple Haze. What a great opening lick is, obviously, as you all know. Uh, can't say much more about it, but Purple Haze has got to be in my personal favorite rock and roll songs of all time. To me, a perfect single, and, and, and side one of this album, to me, is a perfect side, but there's a whole fanfare leading into this song, which was the single, and that is uh, the Crazy World of Arthur Brown's song, Fire. I'm the God of Hellfire and I bring you fire. I mean, the the production of that song, the exuberance, the just the assault of uh, Arthur Brown singing in that song, the arrangements are, 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 are gorgeous. Um, this is produced by Kit Lambert with Pete Townsend, who's associate producer. But, you know, Kit obviously was, a man, was part of the uh, stamp and Lambert management of The Who. This was on track records, The Who's label at the time. And... Um, I played this record to death, and this is actually my original copy on track records, and it still sounds fabulous. Uh, I have another copy that I got later, but uh, side one of this is perfect, and Fire is an amazing, intense song, one of my favorites, rock and roll songs. That is why it's included here. Okay, another song that to me is just in a great opening, has one of the great opening rock intense, like feedback guitar sounds, and then it just, uh, explodes with this great, great, amazing drumming uh, produced by David Rubinson, the debut by Moby Grape, San Francisco's Moby Grape, three guitar players and a bass player. I mean, you can't get much rock and roll, more rock and roll than that, but Omaha is the song and fantastic song. Should have been a huge, huge hit. This is a classic album. Uh, this is the my original copy, my two eye on Columbia Records. And Omaha by Moby Grape, a fantastic rock and roll song. That's a that's a song that every time I hear it, I blast. And sticking with the San Francisco sounds, the whole Summer of Love, uh, 67, 68 period of, of San Francisco is from Surrealistic Pillow. And it's the um, song Three-Fifths of a Mile in 10 Seconds. What a great, again, Spencer Dr uh, Dryden's drumming on this is fantastic. And... Um, 
Marty Ballon singing, and just a whole, uh, this is a fantastic album, you all know. One of the great albums of the Summer of Love of 1967, The Sounds of San Francisco, but three-fifths of a mile in 10 seconds. It's an incredible, incredible, explosive rock and roll song. One of the great live bands that probably, you know, I think initially they were the the better live band uh, in the San Francisco scene. Obviously, Moby Grape was great. Quicksilver, Grateful Dead. We had a lot of great bands coming out there, but their live album uh, and the version on the live album, A Blessed Point Little Head, is 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 just is really wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I'm going with Rebel Rebel. Uh, Rebel Rebel. What a great great song on this. David Bowie from um, Diamond Dogs. Rebel Rebel, again, great riff, great rock and roll song. That is Black Sabbath, Paranoid, and I love the title track on that. I remember getting a, I think it was a sampler that I heard that on, so I bought this album, their second album from 1970, and uh, the song Paranoid was sort of a, a, a tacked-on song at the end. It was after the fact, really quickly written, and it became, you know, I think it was their first single. I think, I don't think the first album actually had any singles released, but that's when I got into Black Sabbath. I'm not a, a a person that kept on with them after their first four or five albums, but I love Paranoid. I think it's a fantastic song. It's a fantastic album. Again, another great riff, another repetitive catchiness to it. And uh, so Black Sabbath, Paranoid, uh, with great Ozzy Osbourne singing on it from 1970. And I did see them in 72 at Winterland. The only time I ever saw them, and they were fantastic. So I, I feel great that I saw them, but I just didn't follow them over their entire history. Another great uh, record, which is a great rock and roll record, probably one of the more produced, arranged, uh, interesting record that goes in a little different direction, just in pure rock and roll. But of course, Don't Fear the Reaper. Again, I'm not a huge uh, follower of Blue Oyster Cult, and that's the, I think obviously that's the obvious song from a novice of Blue Oyster Cult. But that's why I like it, because it was so catchy. It had a Birds-like, you know, the band The Birds-like uh, sound to it with that great guitar riff again, a great guitar riff and some parts and pieces in that middle section with that great solo is just incredible. Blue Oyster Cult from um, Agents of Fortune, Don't Fear the Reaper. Now, this next song to me, again, another perfect riff, another perfect rock and roll song. I knew this song for several years before I heard it on this record. The original version uh, of Do Ya is by The Move, the song that, uh, excuse me, the, the band that um, Jeff Lynn had and Bev Bevan had with um, Roy Wood. I should have pulled that to show because I love the original version of The Move. But I think, you know, this adds a little extra. And of course, it's more produced and a little more polished. But I love Do Ya. Do you, do you want my love? Do you, do you? And they put it on um, New World Records. So they revived this great song by The Move and put it on New World Record. Do ya? One of the great rock and roll songs. Um, uh, my favorite rock and roll songs. Next is the opening track, Break On Through to the First Doors album. What a great bass line at the beginning and guitar thing. You know, down, 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 down. You know, day divides the night, night divides the day. An incredible opening to one of the best debut albums ever in rock and roll history, in my opinion. But Break On Through is an incredible opening track and an incredible rock and roll song and a personal favorite of mine. Okay, from then play on, uh, probably my favorite, uh, I'm more of a, a Fleetwood Mac early to mid period than uh, the Stevie Nicks, Buckingham Nicks period, which I like. I do like that, but I follow them since the beginning and I love their bluesier stuff. This is what people might consider just prior to the middle period or the middle period. Um, oh Well, an amazing song on here on Then Play On. Now, there, uh, this I can't remember if this is the condensed version. This wasn't on the original pressing. It was added in the reissues. I think there's a seven inch single that has the version, it's the, uh, the A side, B side continuation, because it's a long song, has the acoustic sort of Spanish guitar influence second version, but he, and that makes it just a special recording, uh, like another record I'm gonna show here a little later, but um, the opening version and that opening Peter Green riff, you know, is, is magnificent, and again, an awesome opening to a great song uh, by Fleetwood Mac. It, 
you know, check your copies of this. I think on the reissue, it is not on it because it wasn't on the original version. A lot of them come with a seven and single, at least in the box set that came out of this period, Fleetwood Mac Records. So when you look for this record, now, don't not buy it because, you know, if you don't have the OL on it, that's a different version. But there also is a Fleetwood Mac uh, import greatest hits that has the earlier Peter Green uh, hits uh, of uh, Fleetwood Mac that has parts one and part two of the OL that segues into the... Uh, acoustic sort of Spanish version with the flutes and the very end, which makes it a beautiful song. But just the first half of that song, I would still count it as one of my all-time favorite uh, rock and roll uh, songs, records of all time. Now, I mentioned before when I was talking about Creedence Clearwater with that great uh, anti-war song, and this is the second one I'm picking that, to me, is very close to the same time, and that is Street Fighting Man from the Rolling Stones, opening up side two. What an intense song, what an intense sort of anti-war violence in the street in 1968. What a tempestuous year 68 was, political bombings, uh, assassinations, and uh, this album is my favorite Rolling Stones album, and Street Fighting Man is one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs. I would, you know, give Sympathy for the Devil the Edge, but in terms of pure, uh, just assault of a rock and roll song, Street Fighting Man to me is a perfect and very favorite rock and roll song rock and roll song i did say the two-parter with oh well but i'm going to go with layla i'm going to go with the song layla that great opening guitar of, of Dwayne allman and then eric clapton comes in and bobby whitlock on pian on, on um well plays in that in the band uh obviously this is jim gordon bobby whitlock um jim gordon the great one of the great rock and roll drummers of all the time and interesting note and i mess this up and didn't realize it just just a year or so ago is that that end bit uh is a, the piano bit is played by jim gordon the drummer that great end bit to layla which you know even if it took that off it's a great rock and roll song just like oh well with the second half of that song it makes it an epic and i quite like that that's a piano riff i think uh, that Rita Coolidge helped him write or wrote and he took and and attached it on but what a magnificent album sort of blues rock and roll record and Layla is a great riff and a great rock and roll song and then I'm going to show I, I decided there's one rock and roll riff that John Lennon did that um, actually Paul McCartney uses it on one of his songs and that's the guitar riff of Cold Turkey uh, that uh, Eric Clapton plays on that song and incredible record incredible single and an incredible like just crying out for help and crying out for just getting back to some kind of normalcy and getting off the getting off the you know smack uh john and yoko went through a, a, a period of heroin addiction and that was a song that was a cry for help and angst cry, Ather Janoff, primal therapy, screaming, and incredible guitar lick. Uh, Let Me Roll It is the song that McCartney kind of does a similar lick to it. Um, you know, homage uh, influence, that's okay. That's what rock and roll is about, taking something and, and running with it and make it into your own version of it. But Cold Turkey on this, I quite like the uh, Live Peace in Toronto version, which is really a friggin' wild version as well. Okay, another rocker, um, just a great rock and roll band, and one I saw in 1968 at this uh, San Francisco International Pop Festival in Alameda, California, a two-day event. Uh, doesn't get a lot of recognition, but two days, and I saw uh, Deep Purple. I saw them, that was when Hush was uh, climbing up the charts, and th their first album on Tetragram Tetragrammaton, I believe, uh, with their slow version of Help, which is really a beautiful version. But obviously smoke on the water cliche song great rock and roll single uh it, it figures that someone like me would like that song because it's very catchy and and you know it's it's kind of an anthem cliche rock and roll song but it is so good it's based on the, i think they were recording this album in montreux switzerland and the night before they started recording in this venue uh the mothers were playing and um, zappa and the mothers and while they were playing apparently someone shot a flare <laughs> in the theater and the place caught on fire. I don't think anyone was hurt, but that was the influence for the song Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple from Machine Head. Great, great single. Another great single that's from one of my favorite Cream albums, uh, Wheels of Fire, one album, 
live uh, and one uh, LP studio, but as a white room. Great riff, great, again, a very familiar type thematic, you know, chord arrangement, but the great like wah-wah guitar. And um, I don't know, it's, it's, again, it's one of the great songs uh, by Cream, Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and um, Jack Bruce. Almost forgot the bass player. Uh, the only time I saw Cream, I was lucky enough to see show two of the 2005 reunion tour in London at the Royal Albert Hall. So it was great. They were a little slower than they were playing. And instead, instead of Clapton playing as SG, he was playing the, a Strat, which I think uh, misses the point of, of Cream, but that's his choice. And it was still a fantastic show. Next, uh, this is probably um, out of the box for this video, but I still think it's a great rock and roll record. And I believe this came out in 1969 and was a hit throughout 1970. And the song is Venus. Bananarama had a later hit, but you can't get any better than the original song, Venus. What a great riff. What a great record. What a great recording. A great vocal. Uh, you know, the singer, she has this little bit of a Grace Slick type of sound on this. And I remember first hearing it, thinking it was the Jefferson Airplane. I wish they had a single like as good as this uh, in 1970. Uh, but what a great record. What a great band. You know, I have a couple of LPs of all their stuff and, and they go deep and all their stuff is really good. All, you know, people think they're a one hit wonder band, but no, they got a really good, uh, deep catalog. And there's two records that came out. I should showcase sometimes two albums that came out several years ago. A's and B sides and their singles. And it's really, really good. So shocking blue. The song, Venus, incredible song. Procol Harum's Broken Barricades album, one of my all-time favorite uh, British rock bands, you know, a little bit in the prog. They have one foot in prog, one foot of rock and roll, one foot in art rock. They have a lot of feet, don't they? But uh, the opening track on this uh, is Simple Sister. And Simple Sister is a song by Gary Brooker and, of course, the lyricist Keith Reed with this great, great Robin Trower guitar rip. So heavy, so wonderful. It just got a great groove to it. So Simple Sister by Procol Harum from Broken Bar Barricades. Probably my last of their of that first period that I really love. I think Trower, I think, left after this, which is unfortunate because I, I think they were a great combination, but Trower wanted to do his own thing. Maybe he wasn't getting enough songwriting, you know, the typical rock and roll thing. Now, Evis Costello, great rock and roll artist, but the song that just, again, another exploding great single is What's So Peace, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding, song written by Nick Lowe. Um, love this record. Just, again, a great opening explosion, a great intense uh, opening uh, of a song by, written by Nick Lowe, produced by Nick Lowe on Armed Forces by Elvis Costello. Next, an incredibly great, but a cliched rock and roll song, but still one of my personal favorites is Sweet Home Alabama uh, by Leonard Skinner. I don't have the proper album it's on anymore. I need to rectify that sometime. But what a great riff, what a great rock and roll song. Um, every time I see it now, I don't know if this has wrecked it for me or maybe it's made it even better, but I keep thinking of that scene in that uh, Gus Van Sant movie with Nicole Kidman dancing to the song in the headlights with Joaquin Phoenix behind the car. Such a sexy dance, such a sexy use and perfect use of this rock and roll song, Sweet Home Alabama by uh, Leonard Skinner. Uh, you know, I can't do rock and roll, some of my greatest songs without showing uh, in this song, uh, I Wanna Be Sedated. There's so many great uh, Ramones records, but I Wanna Be Sedated to me is hysterical because of the lyrics. I should have used this on my recent um, uh, anesthesia, anesthesiac uh, video where they put me to sleep for a procedure. Everything is good, by the way. Uh, nothing, no badness, all was good. But it was like a dream, like, I want to be sedated. 20, 20, 20, 40 hours a day. You know, the uh, promo copy original I got of the Ramones. This is from Road to Ruin. What a great rock and roll single, I want to be sedated. Just a, just the concept of the song is great. And of course, uh, it's a simple song, but Ramones were great in their simplicity. Next, um, I'm going to, you know, one of the greatest punk bands uh, and great punk albums which is probably less punk for some people, but to me that makes it a brilliant album, 
And I'm going with one of my all-time favorite songs is London Calling and the, so the title track, London Calling. Again, another song that explodes out of your speakers at the opening track, right when you set that needle down. Fantastic song. I love the line, phony Beatlemania has bitten the dust. It really kind of says something about the chapter of punk bands and what was changing, what had been changing since maybe 1976 uh, with uh, the Ramones and other groups like it and the, and, the, and the Sex Pistols and the Clash and the Damned. And, you know, there's so many punk bands that I could have uh, used. But even though I love the Damned and I like, um, you know, all these other punk bands, there aren't a lot of songs that have stuck with me in the same way as these. But again, London Calling is just a great, great, amazing uh, opener to this album and a great, one of my favorite rock and roll records. And that leads me into this, a great rock, punk album, but a great rock and roll song. Um, and just a, a crazy song, California U Uber Alice. Um, the Dead Kennedys, just, I have that single as well. I bought the single first, obviously. I used to see the Dead Kennedys, probably saw them six, seven times. They were playing, obviously, all around San Francisco all the time. So I saw them a lot, maybe three times, four times, the Mabuhay Gardens, the Fab Mab in San Francisco on Broadway, uh, the infamous punk club. But California Uber Allies is just a great, great, uh, obnoxious single in so many ways. But it was um, an important single, important single in the annals, annual, annals of punk rock and roll. So, Dead Kennedys, California Uber Alice. Now, this song is a little more, it comes from the art rock side of uh, rock and roll, but I love the recording, I love the opening, you know, sound of footsteps and, and starting up your motorcycle and revving it up. And it's a great opening and just a, just a, you know, art rock, a little glam for rock and roll, but love is a drug. I think love is a drug a song written by Ferry and uh, Andrew McKay, who was their uh, horn player, sax player, is just really a beautiful and a, another great opener, but a great one of my favorite rock and roll songs. It's got sort of a mid-tempo uh, beat of rock and roll. It's not a fast song, but it's got a uh, just a great riff and a great feel to it. So there you go. Another song that starts out with literally a minute of drumming and bass and, and just before there's even any lyrics, and that's Lust for Life. I love Lust for Life by Iggy Pop. I didn't pick any Stooges songs as much as I love, like I Want to Be Your Dog and those. To me, this is a better song, and I wanted to do one sort of Iggy song because he's such a rock and roll auteur in a way, whacked out, right? He, I mean, on stage, he's like a Jekyll and Hyde of his own personal persona of the nice, you know, was it James Osterberg? James Osterman, Osterberg, you know, I should know that, but um, he's the quiet kind of good old, you know, Midwestern guy. And then he becomes Iggy Pop and, you know, from early peanut butter stage presence uh, to the collaborations with Bowie. And I just love this record, Lust for Life by Iggy Pop on the album titled Lust for Life on RCA Records. Uh, another song that is just a great, great song. One of the great, uh, 1980 records and a 12 inch that I'm glad I bought when it came out as an import on factory records is Love Will Tear Us Apart. Again, the drumming, the bass, the intensity, the vocals on this, uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart, Joy Division. They burn brightly, softly, shortly, I should say, um, and then morphed into a whole different entity, you know. You can't do a thing about great rock and roll records without talking about Led Zeppelin. And I... My favorite Led Zeppelin album is their first album. Since I'm not a huge heavy metal fan, I don't even consider them heavy metal. Uh, they're a, sort of a blues-based, just great rock and roll band. But obviously, I love uh, I love their albums, most of them. But their first one is my favorite. But of course, my favorite song is Whole Lot of Love. The middle period where it cuts and the guitar solo just breaks, and it's almost like you know, no reverb, no echo. It's so dry. That lead dry bit in the middle, to me, make this a classic song. And of course, the opening riff of this song, I mean, Jimmy Page, I mean, how can you not include a Jimmy Page song or a Led Zeppelin song when you're talking about your favorite rock and roll records? Now, again, favorite doesn't necessarily mean best, but this, these are my favorite rock and roll songs. 
um, my personal favorite rock and roll songs in from Led Zeppelin II. By the way, this is a classic, classics record reissue that sounds fabulous. And I do not have an RL anymore. I went with The Purge, probably, because I had a first pressing. Um, and I didn't know better in those days. So um, if you want to know my address, I would love to have an RL. Pretenders had great rock and roll songs, and you could pick a lot of songs. But to me, I think the great rock and roll songs is My City Was Gone. Um, hey Ho, Way to Go, Ohio. Um, the worst part of the song, which almost wrecked it for me, but I didn't listen to it, is that I think Rush Limbaugh hijacked the song and used it as a theme song on his radio show. And he's one of the biggest wankers uh, ever in my, uh, from my personal point of view. Mazzy's personal point of view, asterisk, in my honest opinion. But that doesn't make this less of a great song. Chrissy Hines, great song. And the riff of this band, produced by Chris Tom Thomas. I saw them twice at the early beginning, once here and once in, uh, in Hamburg, Germany. In, I saw them in Hamburg in 1970, 1980, actually. I, it's when I saw them there. Fantastic band, fantastic song. I mean, middle of the road, back on the chain gang. But for rock and roll, great song, a favorite rock and roll song that just has that great kind of groovy, um, swampy sound is uh, My City Was Gone. Girl from Ohio does good in rock and roll. Smells Like Teen Spirit, what can I say? It's a cliche song, but it's a great friggin' record. It was a really change in rock and roll from punk move, uh, morphing into rock and roll, taking punk assets, rock and roll aspects, uh, a little bit of a, a melody to it. You notice a lot of these records do, even though they're rock and roll, I still am attracted to melody. And a lot of these songs, whether it's Smoke on the Water or uh, Don't Fear the Reaper, are melodic in their rock and roll uh, sensibilities. And same with um, T Smells Like Teen Spirit. What a great, great single and a great vocal on that. Uh, the grunge thing kind of morphed into that. Uh, my favorite song in this uh, sub-genre. R.E.M.'s Green Album is a song on here that I just love. I, 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 there's two great songs that are to me are just great, like intense, thick rock and roll songs. Orange Crush, I decided to go with, which I love on this album, Green. It's just, it's dark, it's rich, it's thick. The other one was What's the, Kennedy, What's the uh, Frequency, Kenneth. I love that song. I did include it on a different album, but... Um, Orange Crush, what a great, great, another kind of anti-war song um, by R.E.M. Again, another album, never mind the Bullocks, uh, my original UK copy. And what I want to show in here, which to me is a great uh, song, is God Save the King. The Queen, God Save the Queen, the fascist regime, she ain't no human being, God Save the Queen. Uh, Obviously, I could have picked Pretty Vacant and and uh, Anarchy in the UK. Anarchy is a great song, but to me, God Save the Queen adds sort of a little humor to it. It just adds something that makes it a, a perfect song from my point of view. So, God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols, 1978. Another great song. Uh, now, it's, the, it's, the, it's her biggest hit. You know, it's a Bruce Springsteen written song, but I still think... Because the Night is a fantastic single, a fantastic song. I mean, I've heard Bruce do it live, and he does it amazing. But I think her, uh, Patti Smith's version uh, on um, Easter is the definitive version. It was a great breakout single for her. I love her stuff that she writes, not to take away from her own writing, but like certain artists, that one song that really fits together, uh, Because the Night, and the way she belts that song out, the way the uh, production uh, by Jimmy Iovine on this is just fantastic. Because the Night, written by Bruce Springsteen, but performed perfectly by uh, Patti Smith and her band. Wonderful, wonderful record. Leading in from that, I had it go with uh, my, the one, one Bruce Springsteen song that to me, I mean, it's, he has a great rock and roll song. I could have been Rosita, Rosalita, could have been 10th Avenue, Frida, but I still think Born to Run is a perfect song and a perfect record. The screen door slams, Mary's dress waits like a vision. She dances across the porch as the radio plays. Roy Orbison singing for the only, hey, that's me and I want you only. Don't turn me home again, I just can't say myself, blah, 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 I forgot those lyrics. But the beginning of this song, 
the beginning of this album is fantastic. A perfect rock and roll song, a very favorite rock and roll song to me. Now, I'm going to end with an unlikely choice, maybe, but if you watch my videos and you know my taste, it's not so unlikely. And I'm going to end with Warren Zevon's Lawyers, Guns, and Money. What a great riff. Waddy Wachtel on guitar. <laughs> that riff is so amazing. It ends the album. It's got Kenny Edwards on bass, Rick Morota on drums, and Waddy Wachtel on guitar. And it's probably the most rock and roll. He does a great live version of it on his live album, but a um, huge fan of um, I mean, he's, he's such a great balladeer. He's the noir writer of, of mid-70s on Los Angeles rock and roll and ballads and some of the most beautiful ballads ever written. But Lawyers, Guns, and Money is a fantastic rock and roll song, one of my personal favorite rock and roll songs. Postscript. Can you ever forgive me for forgetting Born to be Wild? Come on, Born to be Wild. Mazzy loves you. Get your motor running.